Richmond. Talk about your drama. We thought that Melbourne <laughs> might take Luke Ball with pick 18. It wasn't Luke, but it was not Luke Ball. We'll keep an eye on round two as it unfolds. But right now, we welcome the number one pick for the 2009 NAB AFL draft, Tom Scully. Congratulations, Tom, and uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Jason. It's been a pretty big build-up, hasn't it? I guess uh, relief would be the, the main emotion that it's finally all over. Yeah, yeah, it has. It's been a big build-up towards it, and, uh, you know, it's just good relief now. It's finally been announced. So, yeah, no, really, really excited. And, I mean, you said the relief. What about mum and dad? How have they handled everything? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they've been pretty good. They've been, tra- yeah, just sort of this week's been a bit hectic, but uh, you know, now it's been uh, announced, I'm sure they're feeling a lot better. I would reckon. Now, you had some injuries during the year. Um, yep. Tell us about those and how they're progressing. The knee and was it a small finger? Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I was uh, unfortunately in the preliminary final against Geelong. I uh, actually uh, fractured a uh, side of my kneecap, so I just had a small surgery on that, and uh, it's progressing really well. Um, you know, I'm on track to you know begin training really soon. So, and my finger, I just um, dislocated early in the year and just had a bit of a, you know, just cleaned it up. So, no, nah, it's everything's on track and uh, I'm feeling good. Now, Tommy, you're the third number one draft choice from the Dandenong Stingrays. Who are the others? Yeah, uh, Jeff White first and Travis Johnson in '97. So, you know, it was you know to be named along you know some of those guys. You know, it's a tremendous honour. So. Well, what about draft camp? I guess that's a, a testing time for all young men. First first up, I guess only a limited number get uh, invitations to go to draft camp. And then you put on display for all the clubs. You sit through interview after interview. You're tested in so many different areas. That would be a daunting experience, I'd suggest, for a, a lot of the young men. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it was. You know, unfortunately uh, for myself, I personally wasn't able to do the testing, which I was quite disappointed about due to my injury. But, um, yeah, no, for a lot of the guys, you know, it's sort of the real first time you get to meet clubs and AFL coaches. So... You know, it's a pretty daunting experience, but I suppose you know every player who gets invited there, you know, really want, wants to get an AFL, wants to get an AFL list. So it's, it's a good opportunity to get there and present yourself well to an AFL club. Yeah, Tom, we're going to wind the clock back a little bit. We've got some very early footage of you, <laughs> and sometimes the greatest careers don't start in the most auspicious fashion. Yeah. Take us through what's happening here. Playing with a mate in the backyard, and you've got one right on the button. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Um, well, there's a cannon actually. It's two both heads here. There you go. That's how your manager used to smother the ball. <laughs> His head. Yeah, he's probably got it down a bit lower on that one. So, <laughs> yeah. well, I think that was the uh, the very same backyard that we might have seen a little bit of footage of you with the old man this morning. Yeah, yeah, just went out there this morning, uh, had a bit of a kick and a bit of a kick and catch. So, how's you know, the old man handle the footy? Yeah, no, good. He, you know, he's he's really supported me through the footy, and uh, you know, he's just wanted the best for me, so he's done well. It's a, it's been a massive year, as I said. There's been a lot of focus and talk about you going number one for a long time now but you've still had to juggle the VCE. How have you coped with the exams and everything? And have you got through OK? Yeah, no, it's been a busy time of my life, but, you know, I've had good people around me supporting me and, uh, you know, um, just it has been a busy time, but, uh, you know, one I've really enjoyed and, yeah. Have you already spoken, sorry, Vince, have you already spoken to the, the club down at the training tomorrow, I assume? Um, look, I haven't spoken to them as is to what's going to happen, you know, tomorrow f- and f- from then on, but I'm sure I'll meet up with them later on and uh, find out what's going on. I think they do... F- fries at Casey Field, so that's not that far from your place. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty close actually, so yeah, it'd be pretty handy. 10k time trial here's on, so you might be right. <laughs> well, what about uh, all of a sudden young players that come into the game exposed to not just a good lifestyle, but also you have disposable income? Any plans uh, what you might be doing with the money? Because I think the the pay structure's set for draft picks Lynch, isn't it, for the yeah, first few depending rounds? depending on where they're, uh, where they're picked. Yep. I mean, uh, they have the pay structure, so obviously Tom will be up on the top pay structure, which is about the $57,000 base. Yep. And we have a look uh, per game, 2800 Second round picks, it goes down in different tiers. And they have the ability to obviously, depending on how many games and bonuses they rack up in the first year, that'll go into the uh, second year of the contract, which is basically set. You can't up the second year yep. contract outside the structure that's put in place. Well, a little trade. bit of money coming your way, Tom. You got your eye on anything? Oh, yeah, no, no, not at the moment. I'll just be looking to invest early on and, uh, you know, sort of set myself up. Sensible. Very, Very sensible, young man. <laughs> that's, a, that's a concern. So isn't <laughs> Mum going to hit you up for some uh, rent? <laughs> no, no, she's pretty good, so she'll be happy. I'm staying at home. Well, yeah. speaking of mum, let's catch up now with Sarah Jones and the mother of the number one pick, Naja Scully. I have Naja Scully with me. He just said that you're happy he's going to be staying at home. No doubt that's the case. Going to charge him a little bit of board, I hope. No, hopefully he can save all his money and get his own house one day. Um, but he can pay for his own phone and his own petrol nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> you're a good mum. Now, what's the, the build-up been like for you? So much hype and expectation. No doubt it's been a, an emotional roller coaster for yourself. Um, I'm glad it's all over now. He knows where he's going now. And it's been a bit hectic, but um, he's handled himself very, very, very well. 
very proud of him, obviously, today. Oh, we're very proud of him. He's a, he's a good boy. What was he like when he was a youngster? Was he one of those kids that always had a footy in his hands? He definitely was, and still to this day, he's still kicking the football into my kitchen bench and onto the roof, but, yeah, he's always got a football in his hand. What about watching him growing up? You've obviously seen a, a lot of his footy and got a lot of joy from watching him play. What will it be like going to the MCG and seeing your son run out there in the red and blue? Well, I'll be very proud of him, but I don't think it'll be any different than watching him when he was a little boy. So, um, yeah, just take it as it comes. A few tears and perhaps some champagne later tonight? Uh, a few tears, no champagne. <laughs> OK, well, thank you so much for joining us and we certainly look forward to watching Tom's career along with you over the next decade or so. OK, thanks very much. Thank you, Sarah. Now, Tom, we did see you in that early footage wearing a Richmond jumper. Is there, uh, are there mixed feelings? I mean, we'd all love to play for the club, I guess we barrack for, but realistically these days very few players get to do that. Would you... Do, do you have any preference you'd like to be at Richmond or not fussed? Oh, no, I'm not fussed at all. I'm, I'm absolutely wrapped to be uh, at Melbourne. You know, it's obviously the oldest club in the AFL and, you know, they've got such a rich and proud history. So Players I'm absolutely wrapped to end up at Melbourne. I think it's going to take a few players of your quality actually to, uh, to lift them as well. They have struggled for a few years. Yeah, well, I think they have, but, you know, I think you look at their list and they've got some young, exciting talent coming through, you know, with Jack Watts, Sam Blees and you know, even Jack Grimes, Cale Morton coming through. So I think, uh, you know, they've got a good young list and, uh, you know, I think, you know, they'll, they'll definitely improve over the next couple of years. Where can you see your well, sort of Benji, you we'll mean? just get you to stop there for a moment okay. because it has actually happened. Pickers, we didn't think it would, but Luke Ball has got through to pick number 30 and uh, the home that he wanted, the Collingwood Football Club. Well, he's done very well and there was a... They couldn't get the name out quick enough, the Collingwood people, <laughs> but uh, to, to call his name out. But uh, it's a great result for him. It would have been a nervous uh, little period, I would have thought, the last uh, few days in particular. But uh, well done to Luke Ball. And there's a bit of a cheer when he got called out as well. Does that mean the other clubs were playing a little bit of Ducks and Drakes saying they were going to take him, trying to put the pressure on and uh, just create a bit of angst? Yeah, I think there must have been a little bit of that uh, throughout. You heard a number of clubs over the last week mention that they were still in the game with uh, Luke Ball. So, yeah, a bit of a surprise uh, to me and a lot of people in the room that he got through to pick 30, but uh, Collingwood is sitting there very happy at the moment. Did it surprise you the, uh, the nominated contract that he put in? A couple of heavy years up front, it, no, which isn't dissimilar, no. I think, Pickers, to what St Kilda actually offered him. Uh, yeah, I think the first initial years are maybe a fraction more money, but uh, look, I would have thought that uh, that's the only way he was going to get there was to obviously try and scare some clubs off. Uh, it worked because he's got to where he's got to. Just had a quick look there. Uh, St Kilda have just drafted Nicholas Winmar. No. <laughs> at pick 30, 32, yeah. Nicholas Winmar. So the young 18 year old from Winmar. Claremont. And of course, <laughs> uh, he's 43 by now, I think. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, round two of the 2009 NAB AFL draft is complete. Let's have a look at the way that it panned out and uh, let our experts uh, cast their eye over that and tell us uh, surprises or. Uh, just a little bit about a few. Luke Tapp's got a bit like a Paul Chapman, so he's a powerful, medium, yep. uh, small forward, fantastic kick. Ben Griffiths is your tall timber, 198 centimetre, six foot six, key forward. Uh, Nate Fife is a midfielder forward that uh, kicked six goals in, in a final at under 18 level in WA. Ryan Bastardak, your best mate there, Tommy, is going <laughs> to stay uh, with North Melbourne and stay in, in Melbourne. Kobe uh, Stevens is one that probably mm. could have gone a lot higher, and along yeah. with Aaron Black, I mean, there was talk that he may get up to that top dozen. I reckon they're all terrific types. Uh, Carlisle, a 197 centimetre key forward or defender, and Black, the 192, so a six foot four. Uh, forward from Peel Thunder, so terrific group. And Long, a, he <laughs> is a nephew of Michael Long, and uh, uh, he's been picked up at the last choice by Essendon. And there's Nicholas Winmar, as you mentioned, Pickers. Tell him about Well, the big, the big story there, uh, obviously, is, uh, is Luke Ball at 30, but to yeah. see the names Winmar and Long and St Kilda and Essendon jumpers, I think the fans will be pretty happy with that. Uh, Bartlett was talked about at one stage mm. as being linked a bit with Essendon as well, so 27 is reasonably low pick for him, but it uh, doesn't matter what number you get picked. It's, it's actually getting picked, that's the main thing certainly is. Well, that completes round two. Uh, with a little bit of luck, we'll get hold of uh, another player manager, Paul Connors, who just happens to look after some prominent players, including Luke Ball, who was just picked at pick number 30 and ended up at Collingwood. We've got plenty to come. Uh, the draft will continue on the other side of the break. We've also got a special guest joining us, a man that uh, actually went back as a very, very uh, low pick in the 99 draft. But before we take the break, we should also thank the number one draft pick and congratulate him. Wish him all the very best, Tom. Thanks for joining us and we hope you have a, uh, a long and prosperous career at the Melbourne Football Club. Thank, thanks a lot, guys. Plenty more still to come. Watch them build up a material tower Think it's not gonna stay anyway Think it's overrated Four minutes
tonight. Day five continues with the top eight players going head to head. Murray takes on Ladasco. Then tomorrow morning, Federer versus Del Potro. The ATP World Tour Finals, live and exclusive to Fox Sports. This is a weed. This is Roundup. Roundup kills weeds, roots and all. And if a weed doesn't have any roots, it can't grow back. Roundup kills weeds, roots and all. Fast. Christmas shopping. Take a Harvey Norman Christmas payment option and don't pay till March 2010. That's no deposit, no interest, no repayments till March 2010. Now's the time to buy the perfect gift. Bring your shopping list and do it all in one go. Something for the family, something for your home, something for everyone at Harvey Norman with the Christmas payment option store wide. No deposit, no interest, and no repayments till March 2010. Now at Harvey Norman until Christmas Eve only. Buy two solo products in Woolworths or Safeway during the promo period to enter the solo kick for cash. And you're in with a chance to kick for $1 million. Live on Fox Sports during the Socceroos Indonesia game in Brisbane on March 3. See in store for details. Enter now. I've got my car insurance with Allianz. I did shop around because to me it's important that I do get the right price and the right service back up with my insurance because my car is so important. Initially what drew me to Allianz was the price competitiveness. I get discounts for safe driving and to me that's important. And it's also the security of being with a big company. In today's economic times you need that peace of mind. Allianz is just very easy to deal with. Call Allianz now on 131000. Goals, goals, goals. Oh, that's unbelievable! Nine goals in two games. That's awesome. Now the Hotshot Mariners take aim at the glory. Friday night shootout, Central Coast Perth. Live and exclusive, Fox Sports 2. Two rounds of the 2009 draft are complete. Plenty of names still to be called out. And as history tells us, the best players don't always go early. We just saw a couple of stars in action there that were relatively low picks. And one of those joins us right now from the Western Bulldogs. He went at pick number 43 back in 1999, Lindsay Gilby. Linz, thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks, Josh. Now, take us back to 99. You're sitting at home. First couple of rounds have gone. You haven't been called out. Are you nervous? Are you worried? Um, no, I was actually, I wasn't going in expecting to be drafted. Um, I had a, f a couple of interviews at, at the draft camp, but wasn't really expecting anything. So, yeah, when my name uh, got read out, I was, I was quite happy. It wasn't quite, <laughs> I suppose, the same, um, well, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, obviously it's a big thing now, it's a bit of a circus type thing really, everyone gets builds up to the draft, yeah. but it wasn't probably like that back then, I, I would imagine. No, um, I think... Uh, the draft after ours was the last one on TV, and then the rest it's been on radio, so it's a bit of NFL about it. I love the <laughs> NFL, and there's yeah. a little bit of NFL about it. Well, let's take a look at the class of 99 when uh, Lindsay Gilby went at number 43. How did the top 10 go, I think? You'll see some, uh, some familiar names, I suspect, and also when we look a little bit deeper in the draft, we'll see some pretty handy names as well, but that's the top 10 boys back in 1999. There's some good players there. Fraser Hazelby, uh, Pavlich has been obviously a superstar, and Joel Corey... McFarlane. There's a few misses uh, amongst them, though. Yeah, there's a couple of them. I and mean, uh, Damien Cupido came up with the Brisbane Lions, had a bit of uh, trouble with injury, went to Essendon, and uh, I think he's playing in South Australia now. And Lee Brown is still playing, obviously. But uh, no, I mean, uh, you look deeper in the draft, mm. and there's a few rough diamonds that have come out there, that's for sure. And Lynn, from memory, the national championships were in Brisbane that year. Most of these guys played? Yeah, no, most of those guys played. Um, and as, as you can see on the board, there's a, a lot of guys who went later, uh, very good players in. Uh, in today's game so it, it really doesn't uh, a draft pick's just a number it's just it's what you do with the opportunity well it's funny you say that there's eight picks that went deep in that draft and you'd stack them up against the top ten all day every day wouldn't you oh, and look at the Bulldogs you? and look at uh, Geelong out of that and there's, that's now what ten mm. years ago these mm. guys are all in the peak of their careers really so the Cats did very well out of that draft and so did the Bulldogs how have the next few days pan out for you after you, your name was called out uh, your mates come around celebrated I would have thought and when were you back in training with the Bulldogs um, 
it was back, uh, back. We got drafted in October back then, so I think they do it now, which is good. Luck. The guys who finish their exams and stuff, and uh, the household went into mayhem. Um, I had people coming over with bulldog seat covers, and mates come over and stole all my cricket gear because <laughs> they said you won't be needing it anymore. And it was a, it was a good day, so I just went down the oval and I just sat with me footy for a while. I was in a bit of shock because I wasn't really expecting it. Well, it's fair to say that uh, a number of players uh, have to sit home and wait nervously as their numbers are called out. Some of the stars of the game, in fact, and let's hear from a few of them now. By about draft pick four they said that three teams still hadn't picked their 17-year-old draft picks, and they were West Coast, St Kilda and Sydney, and um, those three teams had picks coming up in the low 40s. And by about draft pick 40, I was looking around to my mum saying, um, I don't think there's any picks left, mum, but then lucky enough, by draft pick 43, the, the Swans picked me up. That first year was a real shock to me, how fit and how much stronger I needed to get. And you know, I, I had ambitions of playing senior football that year, but I was so far away from the mark, and it was hard. I remember being very uptight and intense at that stage, um, thinking that it wasn't going to happen. I know a, a lot of the teams uh, use their passes and, and don't worry uh, as the as the draft starts to get on. And um, yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. I was never told that I was definitely going to be picked up. It was just more of a wait and see what was going to, uh, to happen on the day. So um, that's, uh, that's what unfolded and it took till uh, pick 56 to, uh, to get picked up and uh, I was wrapped when it happened. The expectations I had were probably none really. I didn't think I was going to get drafted. I was a, a 17 year old and I didn't think I was going to get drafted. I didn't think I was ready to be drafted and so that's probably why I was up on school is because I, I didn't think I was uh, going to get drafted. <laughs> Some interesting comments there from Dane Swan in oh. particular. We saw Cameron Ling, one of those low picks. I think you were at Geelong when he arrived, Pickers. And yes. Uh, no great fanfare there when he arrived either. No, no, he had. Uh, he didn't have an acetonely. Yeah, he had arms like sunburned sausages. <laughs> but he uh, worked so hard in that pre-season. I was just... Because he came as a bit of a chubby forward. Yep. Um, Martin Ford. And he missed out the year before, I think, two gilps. I, re I remember playing against him under 18s. And I, I was... Uh, Ring and wet, I think I got drafted at 63 or 64 kilos when I was drafted, and he was just a big beast. Everyone thought this guy's going to be a full forward, and and uh, and now he's one of the elite midfielders in the comp, and his engine's as good as any. So no, it's amazing how things can turn out. Well, he went from a full forward to a, one of the best on balls going around. Where would you start and play your under 18 football, and where that uh, translate into an AFL football the um, next year? Uh, the next year, I started. When I started going into playing seniors, I started more as a forward, and then um, then uh, probably wasn't working out the way I've liked, and then they switched me down down the back line, and and I, I kind of in a way haven't looked back. I've really enjoyed the role there, and uh, no, just looking at that vision, geez, there wasn't game much number of five, me. Mate. That's <laughs> game number five. What about the jumper number? You worked your way from yeah, 29 well, down I, to nine. Number nine. Yeah, I, I like to look at it. Chris Grant started uh, out at 29. If I is get as half as or <laughs> third as good as him, I'll be a pretty happy man. How many years before you uh, got down to the nine? Uh, it took me two years, and when Paul Hudson retired, that's when I uh, I snapped it up. You swooped. <laughs> you swooped. How did you find playing uh, next to Rowan Smith across halfback? I mean, you would have had to stay back and pick up his man a fair bit, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh yes, yeah, Smitty, he's, uh, he's a good, he's a good sign off. Uh, yeah, pick up, pick up my man, and, and I'll run forward. But um, no, I, uh, I actually I learn a bit off him, and uh, I lived with him in in 03, and I kind of take I felt like I t took a bit of the success. Yeah, I was an all Australian that year, so mm. I'm trying to claim it. Well, Lens, we had a look at your draft. That was 1999. We're going to go back a little bit earlier. A couple of blokes on this panel went in the 1986 draft, if you can believe that. Or I was five. 87. I was five years old. Oh, that's okay. That's to rub it in. That now, uh, <laughs> Pickers, let's start with you. I think you were working as a bank teller, weren't you? Yeah. When, uh, it yeah. wasn't quite an affair like this. How did you no. find out? Um, I actually had a day off work. I took a sickie. And, uh, <laughs> was, uh, no, I'm serious. And I, uh, it came on a news break, and it came on the back of a whiteboard. And I'm looking down on the back of the... Yeah, as the newsreader's telling you, the national draft was on the day. All of a sudden, I saw my... I thought, is that North Melbourne? I had no idea where I was going. Honestly. So you saw your name, but not quite the club. Couldn't see the club. So, yeah, but it was a very low pick. Like, as in, not a high pick, like as in... 48, Steak knives. 48? <laughs> yeah, yeah, back then you, it was. You were doing a bank job as well in Tassie, weren't you? Yeah, I was 
at the uh, at the NAB, one of their finest bank tellers. Don't worry about that. And um, obviously there was no radio coverage, let alone TV coverage back in those days. So I got a phone call about four or five hours afterwards from Arthur Wilson from Fitzroy. And after your mob went past me yeah. about five times and <laughs> promised me they were going to pick me up, but they didn't. Really? Same, yeah. Well, Hawthorne said they were going to pick me up. Collingwood said the same thing. I've had a chat with Lee Matthews about this a few times. <laughs> he blames Gubby Allen and Gubby <laughs> Allen blames Lee. You know, the, funny, <laughs> Lynch, the, fun, the funny thing is, mate, is that Jason is that old mm. that he went on a Form 4. Yeah, he went on a Form 4 at the second club he trained at. Actually, we haven't spoken about that. What happened at Fitzroy when you got the flick from there? <laughs> I mean, got the flick. Well, you got the flick. They took one Queensland kid. And they Scotty McIver. They did take Scotty McIver. Take the tall one, the chubby guy. Well, I wasn't going to say that. That well, was the assistant coach's viewpoint at I'd the time. Had, oh, yeah, I probably had them had a bad choice because I used to love collecting the footy cards and used to get, I don't, you'd remember this, the stimmer on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you used to get all Mate. the powder over the cards. So I had all your cards. Uh, you would have been in nappies back then, <laughs> means, let me tell you. No, I trained with Fitzroy for a week and then got interest from Hawthorne and in the end I got an offer from both clubs. I got offered $5,000 by Fitzroy and 10 grand by Hawthorne. So what, it's, it's fair to say it wasn't a big money deal that brought me down, but all I ended up doing was picking the club that looked to be a little bit more secure. So you did not get the flick? No. Oh. Well, I do remember getting a blast from Bernie Quinlan at training too, because I didn't call him back in with a fly of the ball, and this old bloke gave me a cook, and I just didn't know where to hide after Probably best to go. <laughs> Interesting also, in the, that draft at number 55, Pickers, you went 48. What about the bloke that went seven picks after you? Yeah, just a guy called... Darren Jarman. Could play a bit. Went seven picks ahead of him. Different rules back then, though, <laughs> shifted because you didn't have to go. The interstaters didn't have to leave home, and he didn't. No, he was drafted by Melbourne. They had a retention scheme there in South Australia at the time. We weren't truly a national competition, and they weren't willing to let their very best players leave their state. Well, right, I think that's a fair measure. I mean, uh, they knew Darren Jarman wasn't going to go, so they rode him at 55, but only seven <laughs> picks ahead was uh, pickers they knew he was going to front up in <laughs> five minutes. So that's all well and good. Lynch, you, you would pick 50, mate. Yeah, but it was exactly a strong draft, 1986. 87 was a touch soft. <laughs> Lynch, let me ask you this. Uh, senior players of the club, do you have any input in recruiting? Do they run anything by, like, what type of players you need? Um, no, it's more left to, I think, the psychologist and, and, and the clubs. Um, Obviously, they're recruiting staff. Yeah. I think that's what they get paid to do, and they spend all the time on it. And uh, I know they interview players to see what their, their psychs are like, and you, it's important. You're not just drafting a footballer. You're drafting uh, a, an individual that's going to add to your group, and you've got to make sure he's switched on. And and, uh, and and once we do take him, we'll take him under our wing and, and see how he goes. Well, you've got a few to take under your wing, mate. Uh, hopefully some good ones. We appreciate you giving us the time to come in and have a chat and share a few of your experiences, and good luck next season. No, thanks, guys. Well, Mr Gilby Thanks. joining us there. Let's now check out round three. It has been completed in the uh, 2009 NAB AFL draft. And... What do we make of that, gentlemen? Well, the first of the tall blokes, Max Gorn, who is the biggest bloke we've ever had to draft camp. He's a, he's a whole 207 centimetres. We thought he may have gone early, but he's gone. Asprey's a key forward, a leading key forward. Um, Houghton, also a tall player. Um, and and uh, Sam Grimley is one that's bobbed up too. Just played three games late in the year. He's a 199 centimetre guy that can play ruck or centre half back. Interesting choice, and then uh, Jesse Crichton from Tasmania. Good to see the Hawks at the draft finally. Yeah, finally. Pick and 39. I don't think it's a great surprise to see we took a Ruckman either. No, <laughs> well, there, it is in a way because Nathan Varley was probably rated as the number one yep. of the Ruckman. He went after that pick. So uh, Gorn, when I was the first Ruckman, real traditional Ruckman that was drafted. And then Matt Day is an interesting one. Just played a, f a handful of games late in the year after switching from basketball. Had been a, a state representative in Victoria and then uh, switched back to footy, and it was just that handful of games was enough to get him picked. Jesse Crichton was one there very late that I know you had rated mm -hmm. fairly high at the start of the season. Dropped away a little bit, or what was I, the perception no, there? No, I think that he, and I noticed Ryan Harwood, another Tasmanian, went one after the other, but both uh, midfielders, but Crichton's so creative. He's lightly built, so you yep. just have to be a little bit patient with a guy that's lightly built, but he can play that young fella. Well, three rounds down, plenty more still to come, and we'll watch it all unfold on the other side of the break. Michael. Find cheaper car insurance within 21 days of buying budget, and they'll not only match it, they beat it. Or call Budget Direct on 13 30 26. Or go online now. Budget Love. Budget Direct. Okay, once more round. Beat this Boza. Three laps to go. Keep on. Make it home. Is that Israel Falau? Catch up. Great father. Great father. Power Rangers. 
Acetonic. Perform at your peak for longer. Powerade. The power to reach your goal. Want to give the latest look this Christmas? Try this for size. Grab the amazing Nokia E63 on Vodafone prepaid, now just $199. Plus, recharge and get free mobile access to Facebook until 31st December. Try us for size. You think I'd be pleased a Hungry Jack's named the new Angus Burger after me? Too lovely. 100% Angus beef patties, flame grilled to perfection, topped with cheese, bacon, fresh salad, angry onions. It's quite tasty. But did they name it a handsome Angus? No. The clever Angus? Intelligent Angus? No, we called it the Angry Angus with 100% Angus beef. I think you're on. Yes, I would like to make a complaint. Oh, and can I have 12 Angry Angus burgers? Thank you. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. Yalla, yalla! Race into Ted's for your chance to win a Nikon $10,000 trip to Paris or San Francisco. Woohoo! Just buy any Nikon DSLR camera, receive your free 4GB memory card, plug it in, and instantly see if you've won the trip or prizes valued at over $35,000. So celebrate 50 years of Nikon in Australia by winning a trip overseas at Ted's. It's where Australia shops for Nikon cameras. stars of the AFL. Note about that, Luke Power. He was just a teenager when he left Melbourne to forge his career out with the Brisbane Lions. And we had the pleasure during the week of catching up with Luke's parents, Kevin and Michelle. Just had a little bit of a chat about the parents of a draftee who gets lost to interstate. Very upset. Um, you're very upset, but pleased for him. It was his dream, so we were happy for him. But we were upset because it really was going to be the division of our family. I spent a lot of time crying. Um, it was very emotional. Uh, the phone kept ringing and I couldn't speak to anyone on the phone. I think gradually he settled. Uh, I can recall that for the first year and a half before he established himself in the team, he was always on the phone, uh, you know, telling us he wants to come home and he'll come home as soon as he can. The thing that strikes me is the speed at which it's passed. You know, he, he left us. He was, he was a young kid and he's today, he's a great club man and he's a great community man and we're, he's developed that in our absence and uh, hopefully our influence uh, spread to him to, to uh, become that person but we're very proud of him. Certainly a glittering career and a player that spent many years playing alongside one Alistair Lynch. Now, Lynch and Pickers, I want to talk to you guys in particular. Uh, we know that drafts impact upon so many people, not just the kids that are draft themselves, but also the families. And you would both deal with families and, and helping them cope with the fact that, look, you don't really have control over where the boy's going to go. It could be an interstate club and there is a bit of anguish involved. There certainly is. And I mean, when the youngster moves away from home and goes to that interstate club, um, I mean, the clubs are structured so well to give a lot of support and they have a lot of support both uh, with the players and around the club and hopefully with the manager as well. But I think Luke Power actually was one that, I think he went up with Andrew Island, lived with him, who was our CEO at yep. the time. So he had some good uh, support from someone he knew and settled in over a period of time. It was an instant mm. love of Brisbane and there's been some temptations to come home. So I think Luke's probably hoping now that he's Sam, <laughs> Sam, his brother, can get up there yeah. as well. I think the, the interstate clubs probably do it better than uh, when you've got a player from your local uh, area because it's purely because I think if they're going to invest two year deal which they're going to invest in these young guys they're going to make sure they settle otherwise you're wasting your pick especially the high draft picks yep. and their welfare systems off the ground now are much better than they were you know five seven years ago and more so you say the non-victorian clubs especially the non-AFL clubs which is I suppose no it's New South Wales and Queensland it's very important that they haven't got that AFL structure mm. around them in the community yep. as well so it's important to have that structure on the ground and the way it unfolds about 40% of people move home it's 
the reality. So there'll be tears as uh, you pack your bags and head away. But that's probably been happening for 100 years as you move from country towns into even the old VFL, Waffle, Sandful. So it's just part of elite sport, I suppose. Loving your stats too, Shif. You've got a stat on him. <laughs> Couple numbers. Whatever happened to the days where parents couldn't wait to get their kids out the door? Yeah. Away you go, go and make your own life. But there none of them left. They stay at home these days in their 20s. It's a little bit cheaper at home. Well, uh, let's uh, spare a thought for the Selwoods. I mean, they've got four boys, only one of them. They're there from Bendigo. Only one of them stayed in Victoria. The other three are uh, interstate around the country. Yeah, or you could look at it the other way. You've got uh, some nice destinations for holidays throughout yeah. the season. Probably got some free flight so you wouldn't have to pay for a flight anyway but yeah that's pretty tough how'd you go you were then thrown out of home and sent to melbourne wouldn't you i still have the footprints on my bum i think <laughs> <laughs> best of luck see you see you later well one man that will be traveling interstate is kane lucas who went to the carlton football club with pick number 12 and sarah jones has caught up with kane's father john what an emotional roller coaster for you and the family today obviously ecstatic that kane has been picked up but probably disappointed that he's going to be leaving or rap that you've got him out of the house no um, i'm pretty happy that he's going he's um pretty professional and i think um melbourne um obviously carton will suit him well i think um he's such professional at his game you like it over there every dad in australia probably dreams that their son is going to play afl football today pretty proud today well there's a few dreamers out there but um yeah, fair, fair few dads do, but every kid that's in front of you actually dreams of playing AFL, AFL footy, so, yeah, um, yeah, it's a pretty good effort. You played yourself 20 games for the Swans in the early 80s. Glad to see he's following in your footsteps. Hopefully he plays a few more games. Yeah, hopefully he gets a few more. Um, back in our day, we actually had to work, so uh, work and play football, but, yeah, I think he'll be OK. Speaking of working, he's... Got a fair pay rise today. Are you going to put your order in for a ripping Christmas present? Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I reckon Kane will need a cookbook. Uh, but um, no, I reckon he'll be right. Just on that, how domesticated is he? Is he going to need lessons from mum on washing and ironing his clothes and, and feeding himself? I think he'll have to actually take his mum for the first month, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but uh, no, he should get along OK. Yeah. And you said before, it's not feelings of, feelings of disappointment that he's leaving. You're excited because you see it as a great opportunity for him to, to move to Victoria, the heartland of AFL. Yeah, I think um, Kane said this is where the mecca of football happens and uh, uh, Perth, you know, um, is probably a little bit smaller in that area and you can hide a little bit over here and still be a professional. Well, I hope you've got your frequent flyers up to date because no doubt you'll be coming over here to Melbourne to watch him play and congratulations to you and the family. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah, there with John Lucas, the father of Kane Lucas, who will be leaving his home in East Fremantle and heading to the Blues in 2010. Well, we know that they get tested a lot, these players at draft camp. They get put through the hoop in so many different ways. And this year, for the first time, a brand new kicking test that was designed by a man that actually knows a little bit about kicking the footy, uh, one Nathan Buckley designed the kicking drill that they actually tested the players with up at draft camp this year and a pretty effective one by all reports Lynchy. Yeah very much so it's a yeah, very good test that everyone's starting to use and I mean more so in modern football you have to be able to kick the ball so I mean clubs are focusing on this so I think it was only a generation ago that uh, athletes were being mm. recruited and will teach you how to kick the ball when you get to the club but you've got to better kick the ball now. Well you can see him here Lynchy, they've got to turn around a cone and off one or two steps identify the target and hit it and this was also done on a very windy day. Mm, very typical of uh, modern conditions, you don't have uh, too much time on a lot of occasions in uh, AFL football, turn, sum up the situation and hit the target, you must hit the target, we see so often uh, clubs that are struggling, they turn the ball over across half back and uh, cost them goals. If you remember, if we go back uh, a number of years, there was a, a, a change in drafting mentality. It, it used to be, let's just get the best footballers. Mm -hmm. Then they started drafting athletes to try and make them better footballers. Now I suspect we're getting back to, you know what, skills are all important. Let's get the blokes that can play, make the right decisions and use the footy and make them better athletes. I think that that kicking test is making that statement. Yep. You've got to be able to use the ball. Sure, you're going to have clean hands. That's a given. You don't fumble it. Then you're going to make great decisions as to what to do when you get into your hands. Do you use the hand pass? Do you kick it short or long? And can you execute under a bit of pressure? So Nathan Buckley's test sends a great message to all the kids aspiring to get there. You get good on right and left side. Absolutely. Don't worry. You've still got a better run.
you, I mean, <laughs> you still have yep. to be able to run. I mean, there's the elite runners out there, but I think it's more that balance of the skills and athleticism these days. Well, the How much input as managers do you have, because in, in advising the kids that you look after, what they need to work on and how much work they do on it? Well, as much as you can have, I guess. I mean, they've got enough people coaching them through the under-18s. I mean, I suppose the ex-players that are, that are managing is probably a little bit more relevant because we think that in that situation, you know, you're, the mentoring side of things is really important, but they get so much coaching all the way through and they get to the elite stage with the AIS draft camp and all of a sudden uh, those guys are put under a little bit more pressure against their peers. So, um, look, I, I'm just, I suppose the question I'd ask, Shifter, is... Why has it taken so long for a test like that to be introduced? I think uh, overall the recruiters will say, look, we'll make that footy kicking judgment within games. Mm. You know, champion data will produce a stat again that says he's 65% uh, efficient with his kicking or 75%, but it's the strong statement we want to make. And you shouldn't have a draft camp without being able to, uh, having a kicking test of some uh, nature. And that was the... Uh, I suppose the researcher Nathan Buckley, when he spoke to the yep. 16 clubs and reviewed what our processes were. While that was going on, Shifter, we just heard a little bit of a murmur come across the room, and I think it was uh, attributed to a, a Hawthorne pick at pick 58. It was Ron Hooper. Mm. Ron Hooper picked up at 58, and if he can really get his head into the game, he's got mm. elite ability as a small mm. forward. He has, and I think that's what frustrated the uh, Brisbane Lions coaching staff was that he's got an enormous talent and enormous skill, and really in a void at Brisbane Lions, they wanted that forward crumb, but just his application was the issue. So hopefully the delisting, the few fines during the year, and the redrafting is a wake-up call to apply himself with his second chance, because he might not get another one, I would suggest. He was disciplined and fined at different stages by the Lions. You said there it was the application that was yep. the issue. Is that missing training, being late to training, uh, presenting himself in an unfit state. Yeah, I think it was it was more the application to get into train. There was no real off-field issues. I mean, it was just the, the ability to actually get the train on time, front yep. up a train every time was what was sadly lacking from Ryan. So hopefully this is that wake-up call he needs and he could be a fine AFL player. Another murmur across the room. Oh. Another recycled player. Now, this is an interesting one because he's gone back to the club that he actually left. Was that Jesse's 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 editor. No, no, St. St. Kilda. St. Kilda. St. Kilda. St. Kilda. St. Kilda. Sorry, St. Kilda. I thought I saw North Melbourne. No, 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 no. He's gone to the Saints, which is uh, great for Jess, but... Uh, uh, I was reading you're, North you're Melbourne. Reading just keeping an eye out of the corner yeah, of my eye on what was going was. on. You got a little bit excited I when did. you see Hawthorne all of a sudden making some draft selections. No, no, no. You I haven't thought, got five I in a row. imagine if the club redrafted. That would be very interesting. But he's had incredible problems with his ankle. Um maybe a change of environment, a different mm. approach to the, the treatment of that ankle could help, perhaps? Yeah, well, and that's really what, what it's all been all about, is I suppose trying another program. Um, nothing, you know, no disrespect to what's what he's tried in the past, but uh, a new club, hopefully some new ideas, and you never know. It's good to see some of these players getting another opportunity shift. You said how many... Uh players that had already been in the system and nominated for this draft? Over Around the 60 mark, I yep. think we're at three, aren't we? About three or four yeah. at this stage, so it might be a bit of a rush here in the last couple. So the level of player we're talking about, the youngsters that are coming through in that 50s and 60s, um, and there's another recycled uh, player in Patterson going to St Kilda after being at Richmond, but we see players here and the ones that missed the draft. Is there much difference here? Is it a bit of a lottery this late in the draft? Yeah. Yeah, and so the decision is, do you get a guy that can help you for the next couple of uh, years? You're not looking maybe for that 200-game player, but someone that can fill the need that your club may have at the moment. All right, let's uh, check out exactly how round four panned out. As we mentioned, uh, Ron Hooper and Jesse Smith, a couple to find new homes. There are plenty of uh, youngsters there that could well be. Uh, we know some of the players we've spoken to that can go very low. There could be some stars here. And Jack Fitzpatrick, Lynch, you've been interesting one you had a little bit to do with in his uh, last couple of years. Yeah, he had, had some uh, chronic fatigue issues. Uh, Issues and I just tried to help him there. And I mean, he's an extremely athlete. I think about the 201, 202 centimetres, extremely athletic ruckman that, that can go forward. So um, he'll be, a, he could develop into a very good pick. There's Ron Hooper was the big one. And uh, yeah, a number of names just coming out to get their opportunity on senior lists. Adam Patterson, another one there that's mm. ended up at St Kilda after uh, a few years at Richmond. He was very highly rated in his year of the draft as well. Well, that is four rounds down, but there are still some opportunities left. Some very, very nervous young men at home, I'm sure, but plenty of names still to be called out. And on the other side of the break, with a little bit of luck, we might even catch up with another player manager in Paul Connors. Stick with us. Plenty still to come.
barbecues galore. Whether you're giving or entertaining, you'll find everything you need to barbecue better this Christmas with sizzling savings on some of Australia's best barbies and outdoor furniture. There's 30% off the Patio Master 2 burner, now just $239. Save $100 on our brand new Beef Master Premium 4 burner and save an incredible $300 on the Dubai 7-piece setting. Plus, get better advice at no extra price on our huge range of Weber barbecues. So hurry in for these and more great offers. Barbecue better this Christmas with barbecues galore. When did you stop asking questions? When was the last time somebody quoted you? When was the last time you were inspiring? Or inspired? When did you discover that you could influence others? Be listened to. And change the way the world thinks. When did you last read The Australian? chance to win the ultimate World Cup experience. Use your imagination, show us how passionate you are about football and whirl to win a trip for two to the 2010 FIFA World Cup. Visit ilovefootball.com.au to find out how you could be in the stands, cheering for the Socceroos as they chase football glory. Roll your weights to the World Cup to join us in South Africa. World to win. Go to ilovefootball.com.au for more details. Selection 30, Collingwood. Player 210698, Luke Ball, St Kilda. That was the exciting news a short time ago. Pick number 30, Collingwood, Luke Ball. They got their man. We're now joined by his manager, Paul Connors. Paul, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having us, Jason. You must be absolutely thrilled. There was so much talk about uh, Melbourne, Port Adelaide, Essendon might sniff him, but he got through to pick 30. Yeah, it's been a... It's been an interesting six weeks. I think it started the day after uh, the trade trade day and uh, it stopped tonight. So uh, I think we're relieved. There's a few smiling faces around Victoria, I think. You are recognised as the number one player manager in the game, of course, <laughs> despite <laughs> the presence of these two men here. Thank you, uh, boys. Why was... Uh, we, we, well, you and St Kilda are unable to do a deal trade week. Why is it so difficult for deals to get done? Look, it wasn't myself. It was Collingwood and St Kilda and I'm... You know, anything my role's trying to mediate. Look, it's a hurly-burly situation. The boys have been involved. Um, you know, it's intense. And um, sadly, the deal didn't get done. I, you know, I'm not sure if tonight's the night, but free agency will come because I think we've used up too many paper spots on Luke. And I think he's been put through a hell of a lot. And I think it would have been easier for him just after eight years of great service to be able to choose his club. Was it a job well done to not allow him to go or make the decision not to go and speak to other clubs? Look, it's been, you know, that's been well publicised in the paper. We've chosen both Luke and myself not to speak publicly. Um, I think in the fullness of time that'll come out, but I think you'll find there, w there weren't too many requests, Alistair. Yep. So, um, you know, I don't think, I heard someone say at one stage, you know, if they want to speak to Luke, they'll call him directly. I don't think he had a call. So you weren't overly surprised you got through to pick 30? I, I was always confident, my yep. wife said I was far too confident <laughs> internally <laughs> and um, but there's a lot of emotions you roll and you know he's just a quality person so I, I'm just delighted I think you were saying you're nervous for the players mm. I was nervous for Luke um, I'm delighted for him you would have been nervous when Melbourne called out pick 18 and they said Luke pause <laughs> <laughs> that's got it it was like reminiscent of Brownlow night wasn't it the oh way yeah. Andy Dimitri called it out uh, he's obviously been working hard on his fitness so I know he's been doing plenty of work uh, at the tan running laps yep. and doing hill sprints and the yep. like and also I think doing some workouts with uh, the old Zavs boys to keep yourself yeah. up to speed no he, he looks terrific doesn't he um, <laughs> it's not the smartest place to, to <laughs> train at, uh, at the horseshoe of the tan uh, he's <laughs> under the guidance of Mark Fitz there in the red um, he, he's a uh, fellow old Zav and he also trains at Old Zavs under the guidance of uh, Simon Lethlane, which I think gave the boys a bit of a buzz. I think he ran, he went down there Tuesday and he had the Zavs singlet on and um, I think it got the boys up a bit. Well, they would have been happy with that. Uh, he looks really fit. He looks in really good nick. Uh, so, because he's been training himself, I mean, going to the new club, he's not going to be too far behind. No, he's not, is he? Um, the, he, he will. It's, I'm not sure if he goes to uh, Arizona or not. I really haven't asked that. He far. is. He is. You've Jeff Walsh, I believe, has waited here till tonight. And we'll be taking him to Arizona tomorrow. Okay. Staff, we're on a plane tomorrow. <laughs> we're going overseas. <laughs> you know more than Passport me. Passport sorted. Um, 
Look, he does look fit, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, I was just talking to David Bajinski today, and he's they're, they're doing a lot of the Geelong boys who have been in the system for a while are doing their own thing. I think mentally it's it's pretty smart. I mean, um, I think they're all pretty professional these days. No one's more professional than Luke. Um, time will tell. He's um, he's got he's got some work to do. I mean, he didn't have the year, you know he had a bumpy year. And um, I think he's got some work to do, but I think he's prepared to do the hard work, and we'll see how it goes. I guess that's the key, too, because uh, he's obviously left St Kilda because of the opportunities. He yeah. wasn't playing regular football and felt that he wasn't uh, getting the most out of himself there. I don't suspect you can guarantee a player um, a spot in the team all the time, and I'm sure Mick Malthouse wouldn't have done that at Collingwood. How did that play a part in the discussions? Look, I just think um, Luke, Luke probably feels that Collingwood, and that's half the reason he wanted to get to Collingwood, they were keen. And he sees that there's a position for him to help them with their contested ball. I think it was probably an area Collingwood just lacked a bit when Pendlebury went down in the preliminary final. Um, time will tell, but look, he's definitely prepared to do the work. Now, I'm desperate to ask you another question about one of your other young charges. And you've got a few yep. that uh, went in the first round. I think Melksham's one of yours, yep. Lucas one of yours. Lucas. Also, yep. uh, John Butch is one of yours. The Butch. He went to pick eight. Yeah. Where'd he go? He went to Port Adelaide. Right. You've said some interesting things about Port Adelaide in recent <laughs> times, like Look, no one wants to go there, and no, one of your boys has. I think, and for all those Adelaide people, again, I reiterate, what I was saying is they should go to the draft and not pick, I was trying to say, don't pick an Andrew Lovett or a recycled player like Luke Ball. Get pick eight, nine and 16. I, I think they're the big winners. I, I, I could see Blair Hartley smile from ear to ear when he when he picked up Jasper. He sounds like it a real say. square up to me. It yeah. does too, does it? Well, I think <laughs> Liam's got to square up to uh, North <laughs> Melbourne, doesn't he, Lil? So I think we all square we all square up at times, but and you know, I'm squaring up or up. And that's an interesting situation because you do in the early build yep. of it all. Absolutely. And in fairness to what Paul went through with, uh, with Luke Ball, uh, you do have those blues and you do have times where you haven't got them yet, Lynch. You, you're sitting there being Mr. Nice, nice Guy. Wait until you have the, uh, you have the, you have the, the cut and thrust with the footy team and then, you know, you've got to get over it though. That's the reality of it. Well, let's face it, drafting is all about relationships and, and the relationships that you guys have with clubs yeah. needs to be solid. Clubs have long memories. You guys have long memories. Players yeah. have long memories. So yeah. if you put noses out of joint, it can yep. be hard to mend that relationship, oh, can't it? Oh, and I think that's important. You, you always have, you know, we're going to make mistakes. I made a mistake. Um, we've got to just move on. In our industry, if you, if you hold too many grudges, well, you're just not going to be friends with anyone. What's the worst thing you've said that you've regretted later and wish that you hadn't? Probably something to you. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, boys? Pickers, have you been down that track where uh, your yeah, yeah, emotions got the better yeah. of you? Uh, the Jade Rawlings deal, when it fell through, uh, it'd be fair to say I had a few choice words with the acting, well, the CEO at the time. It was prior to your uh, getting on board, but uh, yeah, it wasn't very, uh, it wasn't a very complimentary uh, conversation. I would have thought when I just got back, and I was warned by my boss, who is at the time the vice president of Hawthorne, just to th think before you talk, but. Nah, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> Took a little while, that one. Now, just <laughs> jump in, Jace. Uh, your club, Hawthorne, are taking extra time here. So, in the background, the clubs are really pouring over their last couple of picks. Richmond, in fact, took the opportunity to go for extra time. Uh, yep. Zero, uh, Here's Hawthorne's call. Three, five, four. Taylor DeRay, Murray Bush Rangers. Taylor DeRay. That's the smoky I was telling you yes. about. Yes, yes Taylor DeRay. There's your smoky. And I suppose on oh, that, uh, when it gets this deep, and obviously you're not down there, Jason, as role as in the director of football at the club, um, who has the ultimate say? Is it the coach or is it the recruiting manager? Well, I would, I would like to think that in an ideal world, the way that it should work is if you have a recruiting manager whose job it is to recruit, he makes the final decision. I think a coach should be able to say, this is the type of player yeah. I want. Mm. Yep. Get me the best defender, get me the best midfielder, get me the best forward, and then the recruiting manager goes and finds yes. him. That's yep. the way the system should work because the coach doesn't get to see what the recruiters see. They're watching it day in, day out, pouring over tapes, pouring over yeah. live vision of the kid. They visit with him, they talk to the parents, they know them inside out much better than any of the coaches can do. Yeah, so we know that happens at every other club by yours where you still have the final say, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Don't get carried away like that. Hey, look, you uh, you spoke about free agency. What other issues uh, are out there that you think that are, are going to have to be tackled uh, in the short term? Well, I think the, the CBA is up for negotiation soon. I think the Players Association's in terrific hands with Matthew. Matthew Finnis um, taking over from Brendan Gale. Uh, I think free agency is high on the agenda and, and everything that comes with negotiating a new CBA with the new TV rights coming in. So. Looked after very well players these days, not just 
by you guys, but by the AFL Play Association, the number of programs that are there to support them in every aspect of their life, it's come so far over the last couple of decades, yeah, hasn't it? It's come a long way. I mean, the, the staff, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but the staff at the mm. Players Association has expanded. Um, they've all got a role, and I think it's terrific. Well, when we all started playing, I think you handed over about $90, and you got a pair of uh, got a shorts. Got a T-shirt. Yeah, well, one of you got a T-shirt as well, but it has. And you compare AFL football to uh, a lot of the other sports, both uh, nationally and internationally, and the Players Association are, are very, very good at supporting their players in some rigorous debate with the, um, the code. Paul, did any of your boys end up somewhere where they weren't expecting? Have you had to uh, make some calls or placate some parents or, or rearrange things? Yeah, I think during the during the um, past two weeks there's been a bit of uh, jostling and everyone's been working out where their play is going to lie. Uh, you can never know. There's always a few smokies that, throw, that are thrown up. Um, I'm just hoping Matt McGuire can get picked up late. Mm. Mate, we appreciate your time. Congratulations on uh, finding Luke Ball the home that he was after and good luck looking after the rest of the kids. Thanks for having us, Jason. Paul boys. Connors joining us there. Let's check out exactly how round five of the 2009 draft panned out now. Gentlemen, take us through it. A pass right. there from the Dockers at 68. That's not a person's name, pass. No, that's, that's actually the, the Demons of, at 66. They're out of business now, Melbourne and Fremantle, the rest and, of this draft. And they will save that spot, of course, for the pre-season draft in about two to three weeks' time. So PR, PR the their shifter, is a uh, promoted, promoted rookie. rookie yes. And for the first time, actually, promoted rookies get a draft number. So rather than just being quietly added to the senior list at this time of the year, they're actually recognised for one of the choices late in the draft. You'll see it, a few names in the next round as well that we're familiar with. Well, let's look at the rest of round five and another couple of promoted rookies there. And there's one, you look at pick 75, to Collingwood, Josh Thomas. He's one of the young kids that performed extremely well with the Gold Coast last year, but has elected to go into the draft. So he's, he's got into the, the uh, AFL competition as he was hoping. It's pretty late, but uh, as we've said throughout the show, it doesn't matter where you get picked up, you've got an opportunity now. So very pleased for Josh Thomas to be picked up. And got to Collingwood, he'd spoken to Dane Beams, who took the mm. same punt 12 months ago to say, look, I won't stop with the security of getting onto a Gold Coast list for a couple of years' time for 2011. I want to play next year. Hmm. Joss has taken that punt and he's been rewarded with a spot in Collingwood's list. Five rounds down, rounds six through eight will come to you on the other side of the break. And we'll also give you a club-by-club -club breakdown let you know exactly who your club has picked up in the 2009 draft for season 2010. of international rugby this weekend on Fox Sports. Sunday, the Irish play host to the Springboks. What about this? Then, live at four, the Wallabies look to finish on a high. They head to Cardiff. We must bring down the Welsh. Followed by the French, who battle with the All Blacks live in Marseille. This game has been a cracker. The Wallabies, last chance for redemption, one field for international rugby. This weekend, Fox Sports. Discovery 4. Here's a question for you. What can we do about our home loan rates that will make people happier? Well, hmm, you could make them smaller. Oh, OK, so you could say the smaller, the happier. That's what I did say. Let's make our home loan rates smaller than the big four banks. Exclusively available from Bankwest stores. Hmm. What is that? Favourites? Facebook? Nintendo DSi. The final rounds of the 2009 NAB AFL draft are underway. Rounds six, seven and eight. They'll be short ones because a lot of clubs will be inactive in this period. So uh, 
the last few choices are about to be snapped up, the last chance for some young hopefuls out there, and we certainly hope that your name is called out if you're still sitting at home watching, hoping to hear that you have a future in the AFL next season. Uh, let's have a look, uh, recapping the top ten, of course, if you've just joined us and you missed the excitement of the top ten countdown that kicked off the evening this evening. It was uh, pretty much as expected, gents, wasn't it? Pretty much as expected. I mean, uh, Moore was one that could be anywhere from uh, 7 through to 16. Yep. Very good player. Um, and uh, everything else was pretty right. The, the top six, I think, no doubt, was locked in stone. And Jake Malksham there in the finish. He's an Oak Park boy, not far from Essendon. He's got a five-minute bike ride to get there. Yeah, love that, won't he? Oh, I love it. He was best on the ground in the TAC Cup Grand Final. It's really made his year and uh, help Essendon select him, no doubt. Because we saw the Ds there with the top two picks in Tob Scully and Jack Trengove. There was talk at different stages of the build-up about maybe make Trengove number one if it's better for him to handle it or uh, does, does that come into the, the psyche? The clubs who heard Dean Bailey when they were picked actually say we'd like them to be equal yeah. number ones. Well, in the end they have to split them but uh, St Kilda did it with Rewald and Kaczynski many years ago now but it's interesting because we heard the way he was in the interviews, Tom Scully, I mean he's an impressive young bloke, I have no issues that he'll be able to handle it, absolutely no uh, no problems with that, you know him really well, Lynch. I mean, he's a level headed kid. He's a very level headed kid I think um, he, he can certainly handle the focus as he's handled the focus uh, over the last 12 months but uh, I suppose that they were tossing up uh, whether he'd played against men and I suppose coming off the experience of Jack Watson a lot of focus on him he hadn't played against uh, men before so Trengrove yeah. had certainly done that but Scully's well and truly equipped to handle it both on and off the field. The, the other difficulty I think we've seen in uh, in recent years we've seen a couple of top picks have serious injuries that the clubs have to cope with when they get there and that puts uh, a lot of pressure on the player I mean you know he's a quality player but uh, it's a difficult decision for a club if you're not going to get a lot of football out of him next year. Because most of the top ten picks, you think, they're ready-made footballers. What, what did we just hear a big murmur about? Matt there he is. Matt McGuire. Matt McGuire going to Brisbane, is it? Yes. Yes. Brisbane, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, no, um, Brisbane have probably been looking for that centre-half back. And uh, they've got Daniel Merritt at full-back. Yep. And uh, have had some options um, across half-back, but probably more third tools rather than key position guys. So Matt McGuire, he's got a lifeline. And Great to see the goose get done. Oh, it's it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, He's been anchored on 99 games for mm. so oh, long. Yeah, let's hope he plays round one because that uh, release used to go out uh, every week. And Goose McGuire stuck on 99. They've done some movement. Yep. Lines, haven't they? Oh. Gee, where's the trade week and now the drafting of Maguire? Well, there's no doubt what they're focused on. They've looked at Jonathan Brown and Simon Black and this window of opportunity. Yep. And they've obviously got a couple of really good kids, but they've uh, also loaded up with the experienced kids. And, uh, I mean, it started with Favola, I suppose, yep. and uh, all the other players have gone, Xavier Clark and Reigns, and now obviously Matt Maguire. They're looking at that window of uh, two, three, four years. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 2009 NAB AFL draft is complete. Round six, seven and eight are over. Let's recap those final few selections. And uh, gee, for those boys at home, we hope that your name is amongst them. As we said, they're short rounds, there's a few passes and plenty of clubs not involved. And yeah. we see some names, some familiar names as well that uh, you think, well, why is uh, Liam Picken being put on the list? But that's the way it works now, Kev. Yes, upgraded upgraded rookies win their spot. Yep. Bryce Retzlaff is the interesting one. 195 centimetre guy from uh, from Labrador that just bobbed up later in the year. You know, had a background in other sports and uh, Brisbane obviously liked him. He'd had a couple of unfortunate accidents this year. Dropped the brick on his foot and yeah. missed testing and they've been able to slip him through. So and Brisbane got him at the Gold Coast missed out, didn't she? Yeah, they missed out. He, he, he was a cricketer and uh, had a, a year out to just concentrate on his cricket, then came back and returned and has been extremely good and uh, he'll be wrapped. Got on a list and have a great opportunity at the Brisbane Lions. Well, if you look at that, because of the promoted rookies, Matt Maguire was the last player taken in the draft. Mm. And if we look back at the last couple of years, there's been a couple of handy players, like mm. David Roden yeah. was the last player taken a couple of years ago. Um, and now, obviously, we're looking at, uh, at Big Goose Maguire, so hopefully it goes well for him. Now, we mentioned there were a number of uh, players that had already played AFL that nominated for this draft. 50 or 60, I think you said, Shifty, mm. is that correct? Yeah. We should say that it's not quite the last chance then, because we do have the pre-season draft coming up uh, mid-December. Yes. So, And that's normally where some clubs might just pick up, uh, you know, a stopgap player, one of these recycled players. Exactly. The one we didn't mention was Simon Buckley from Melbourne. Yeah. Collingwood yeah. chose yep. him late, so I think six in the finish of the... Uh, recycle players have found a home tonight. Mm. All right, and you can just see their uh, clubs chatting to some of the players that they've picked up. They'll be keen to make them uh, a part of their new home. And right now we're going to run through each of the clubs individually and find out exactly who your club has scored in this year's draft. 
and the sort of players you can expect to see in action. Hopefully next year, some will obviously take time to develop and we kick it off with the Crows. I'd say what they've done here has gone tall. Talia 195, Gunston about a 190, Shaw over 190 and Craig's a 195. That's a tall group and a very athletic group, no doubt about that. I think that's been the focus under Neil Craig. You've got to be able to run. The Brisbane Lions, Lynchy, your, uh, your mob, we'll call them, because yeah, we'll you call run Brisbane mob. still from up there. Oh, of course. Callum Bartlett, the uh, youngster from Geelong Falcons, had the ACL injury during uh, pre-season, or just before the start of the season, so it's good to see him get a ch uh, chance and uh, hopefully he can get very fit. Ryan Harwood, he's hard as nails, midfielder from Glenorchy in Tasmania, so he's heading up uh, north into the heat. And uh, obviously Matt Maguire, Pierce Hanley, who is the Brisbane Lions elevated uh, rookie from... Uh, from Ireland. He certainly is, and he's doing all right too. Carlton, well, Kane Lucas, they've got a really good midfielder there. Uh, he's a beauty. It's got him listed as a forward, but he'll play through the midfield, you'd think. Uh, Rowan Kerr, Sammy Jack, a couple of promoted rookies. You just have to say that Jacobs looks like he might be long-term a pretty good player for them. And Aaron Joseph, we know, uh, has been very good. Davies and Kerr, a uh, couple of those uh, running type players as well. Yeah, strong body, Marcus Davies. He may play next year. Mm. So just looking at Collingwood's list there, we've talked about Luke Ball, but Ben Sinclair, quick midfielder, Josh Thomas, very clever inside midfielder from Queensland that chose not to go to the Gold Coast, and Simon Buckley, well, I suppose he's half back to midfield, so they're a smaller running type group. And let's not uh, forget number 30, that is Luke Ball there, and uh, the Bombers, I reckon they'll be really happy with this group, boys. Uh, Melksham, I'm sure they didn't think he'd get through to 10. Carlisle, a couple of call to Cannon's kids, we saw them, uh, he's a good player, Carlisle. Collier and Anthony Long, the nephew of the great Michael long just having a look at Fremantle here they've uh they stuck to a couple from home there with Nat Fife and uh, Joel Houghton and, and Jesse Crichton all the way from Tassie will head across uh, across to Fred. I like Dylan Robertson. We haven't talked much about him, but he's a, a me medium to tall defender that really reads the game so beautifully across half back, and uh, he's going to be an asset at the AFL level in the years to come. Uh, Morabito is another group. one of those players that looks like he'll play almost round mm -hmm. one. A very accomplished, strong body player. At the end of Mental. Menzel there. Look at Mitch Duncan, uh, the boy from West Australia. He's a very good young player. Now, Alan Christensen, that's a great story. Uh, his uncle, Marty Christensen, uh, who used to play for the Cats. And Nathan Vardy, I'm surprised he went as low as that. 42, I thought, has probably the pick of the big men for mine, uh, the Ruckman. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple taken ahead of him, but gives that Cats, uh, you know, that extra big man that they're probably looking for as well. Well, Christensen has got himself drafted over, probably uh, slipping out of contention over the last month in dropping uh, eight kilos yeah. and 40 millimetres in the skin folds uh, post-draft uh, camp. So he's done an exceptional job. Here's your mind. Well, there's about not you, too many Jace? surprises there, Pickers. You can see a ruckman and a, and a defender, the first couple of picks, obvious uh, holes in, in Hawthorne's makeup. So they'll be pretty happy with that. And they well, took a gamble with Ron Hooper, hoping to get the best out of him as a crumbing small. Well, did you, were they the, these are the names that going in today that you'd heard They you'd most heard certainly about? were. Very and happy. And well, I actually mentioned all of them to you, didn't I? You did. And they're a left footed group. There's three of those are left footers. It's the old Hawthorne left footers. That's the thing, thing that amazed me. We're talking about all these uh, kids heading in the draft and so many left footers again. Melbourne, well, they've wow. had a, win, a win, swag. Win. Of win, good players picked there, haven't they? Win, win, win. Yeah. Scully and Trengrove, a couple of stars, another gun midfielder in Gisbert's. Tapscott's a good player. Gorn's a ruckman, which they desperately need, and they've gone Fitzpatrick. I think he's mm. probably more of a forward that can potentially yeah, he probably play is, in a ruck. Uh, he's certainly very athletic, but how long will it be till we see those uh, two or three names line up in the midfield for Melbourne? I think Round one. your Round former one teammate Brad Scott, what's he got to play with here, Lynchy? Yeah, he's got some talent there. Cunnington, obviously, a talented uh, forward. Bastanak, uh, very hard at it uh, player from the Danny Long Stingrays. Black, we thought Black might have gone uh, a lot higher, so that's a uh, good purchase there for North Melbourne and a number of players that I don't know a lot about shifter oh, down the bottom Kennedy of the list. was the quickest kid at draft camp, so they've got a 190 centimetre medium forward, and Norris had the best endurance, so they've